Christmas again, crafty friends. I am coming to you with a second blog post for this holiday season. And this one is featuring this little etc. tag with Mr. Frost. We've got the retro TV and the Christmas minis, as well as just a little bit of the tall pines peeking through. So I just kind of wanted to talk th through this little make with you and um, more about um, some things that we can learn from this uh, than uh, so much technique. There isn't a lot of technique to this, but I did want to talk a little bit about some things that might encourage you as you start making this season and uh, maybe you know help it go a little faster. So let's get started with that. The first thing that I want to talk about in regards to this make is that it is partially recycled from last year's making season. Uh, the tag background, uh, just with the sky and the snow on the bottom, the basic layer of snow on the bottom was actually for another make. That was going to be the background for, remember this village from last year? And so this village was going to go on here. And uh, I was in the midst of getting this made when I was talking to Paula and just a little kind of, you know, behind the scenes. It's always fun to get behind the scenes, isn't it? Um, so a little behind the scenes with the makers, uh, Paula, the amazing Paula Cheney, uh, it coordinate helps us coordinate things. And so uh, we were talking about this particular die to make sure that all the dies get represented during a release. And <laughs> um, she said, you know, would you be able to make this village light up? Would you want to take on that challenge? And I said, sure, I would love to take on that challenge. And so um, this got put aside because it was already made and I needed to have places for the uh, lights to shine through the windows. And so this whole thing, the background and this village got set aside last year. And I haven't made anything with it yet. Um, I will probably maybe make something with it at some point. Um, same thing with this uh, tag. This is a one that I made that I was going to do something with and then uh, it didn't seem to work out and so I set it aside. So see, you know, things get set aside. Um, you know, I have gears, I have cauldrons, I have uh, pots, I have boxes that I have made that you sometimes get started and then, uh, you know, it takes a different direction or maybe uh, something else needs, you know, made. So I have a, a bunch of things just kind of that I just grabbed that were, are kind of uh, laying around in my studio to show you that don't throw away things that maybe don't work out immediately the first time because you might be able to, oh, here's another one. Um, so I also have things laying around that when I make tutorials and I don't take a lot of step out photos, sometimes I remake something. Um, so that I can show you the technique and then this gets kind of set around. So this one was from a couple of years ago from Halloween, that, that treat box. So that's just to encourage you that, you know, you may not completely finish a project and that's okay. Just, you know, maybe have a place where you keep some of those things so that when you do have time to create, you can come back to it and it might end up being something completely different, right? So this is obviously very different from that Alpine village um, that is so wonderful. But I was really glad that I had this background because it, it kind of uh, made this little project go so much quicker. So that being said, this is a small etc. tag, or maybe it's called a mini etc. tag. And I painted it just like I did the background for the one I showed yesterday, the... Um, the fire and ice project. So I painted it with uh, just a little mixture of the chipped sapphire and black soot distress paint because I like that darker and I kind of model it. So if you look carefully, you can kind of see that it's not completely smooth. So you can see kind of some of the black showing through here and there and you can see some of that chipped sapphire showing through. Once it was dry, I took my speckle, uh, uh, splatter brush. Thank you. Uh, the splatter brush, I put some distress uh, 
picket fence paint and splattered the little bit of snow back there. And then I painted white back here just a little bit where I wanted the snow to go. And I put a layer of opaque grit paste. That was all I did last year. Then this year, I cut some green trees. And if you look carefully, you can see all that amazing sparkly snowfall glitter that I put on those trees and I adhered them to the background and then I put another little layer over those of opaque grit paste and let it dry. All right. Next thing I did was I I was kind of trying to think what my storyline was going to be here and also I was taking into account what dyes needed to be used so that they're represented. That is always something that um, as a maker for Tim that I have to keep in mind when I'm doing a make is what um, what things haven't been used and you know what things can I showcase so that you know, you can see them and, you know, see different ways to use them. And so I was, uh, as I was doing that, I realized that um, these mini Christmas, I think that's the name of these uh, dies I had not used. And so I was thinking, how could I use these? And there was just some, so many cute little things here that I thought, you know, I'm going to go back to this spring and the Retro TV die, which is a Biggs die, and you can cut chipboard with it. You can cut thicker materials with it. And I'm going to be really honest with you here. I thought, you know what? I never got around to doing my tutorial on my Retro TV. And I kind of felt bad about that. But uh, I got sick. I got COVID pneumonia and I was in the hospital for 10 days. And so I never did get back to this to show how to change the channels. And I thought, oh, you know what? I will do a Christmas scene like this and then I'll change the channels to different Christmas shows and I'll use these dyes and some things like that. Well, you know, it was a crazy making season <laughs> and I did not have time to make an elaborate make like this. That's a little bit of foreshadowing, as they say in the literary world. Um, so something may be coming like this. I'm not positive, but I would still love to do that project. So I'm just putting that out there. We'll see if it happens. That's why I was so thankful that I had this background made because I thought, you know what, I can make a simpler version. Maybe I can't make the changing TV, TV channels right now. I don't have time for that but I can make one channel, right? So I went ahead and cut out the television and what I use for the television is the Tim Holtz Ideology. I use the metallic, so this is that kind of black metallic. And then you can also use this goldish color for it. Um, I use the one that looks like this, but it's the, the gold and silver colors of craft stock. And I don't have one because I have used all and I need to buy another one. Silver, gold, the black. And then this is a little bit of metallic from one of the metallic packs. And this is some of that black uh, kind of metallic. So I used all metallic on this. And that really helps when you are using some of the snow because it really sticks on there and makes it look icy. This silver has two things on it. I put not only the icicle crackle paste on it, but then once it was dry and had crackled, I don't know if you can see all the fine little crackles in there. I also put it on a piece of acetate so that it would look like it was icy around the outside edge of that television screen. But I also added snowfall to different areas, that snowfall grit paste, which I am falling deeper and deeper in love with. I really, really love the way that it looks. So the, his television, because it's out in the woods, um, would be kind of snowy. Then I decided to build a scene before I attached the front to it. So behind the television, I made a little scene and it's hard to tell unless you are looking right at it but it is iridescent in there. And that's because 
all of these little mini things that I have on here and the scarf, the hat, all of that, those are all made with papers that have the Distress Mica Stains in the holiday colors. I didn't use the pink uh, one. Um, I just used these, the main three colors, the Peppermint, Holly Branch, and Snow Flurries. So the sky was made with a little bit of Snow Flurries, and then I cut the snowman out. And as you can see, I have his hat flying away because in the story, Frosty the Snowman, right, his hat flies away. And so I was trying to make um, Mr. Frosty tuning into his favorite show, which was Frosty the Snowman. And then I put some of the little trees back there, a little bit of opaque paste that Frosty is sitting on. And then I built my Mr. S uh, my, uh, I think it's uh, Mr. Frosty. And so I built him. I used, again, some of the mica stain paper, all right, except for his hat because I didn't have black. And he that's also the base. So the base is black, and it has it shows through all those little um, areas where the, the coal is for his eyes and his mouth and his buttons. That is a black pearl paper. And let me show you where I got that. And I also want to show you what I used for uh, the pearlized snow, uh, Frosty the Snowman. Sizzix has some opulent cardstock packs. And they have different colors of them. And so this is the charcoal opulent cardstock pack. And it comes with all these types of papers. So there's this dark charcoal glitter you have kind of a silvery charcoal iridescent. You have a darker one. Then this one is pearlescent. And so they call these um, matte and brushed metal. And this, this pearlescent one is the one that I used for Frosty's base and for his hat. So it looks darker uh, on here than it kind of seems to be. But I found it to be a really... A, a great um, pearl color and then it also allowed me to put the snow on his hat and it didn't turn a color so that's again that snowfall grit paste on his hat all right so that's the the pearl essence charcoal pack and then they also have a pack they have tons of colors my friends tons of colors this is the ivory one and it has quite a few, but I pulled out the pearl. And I don't know if you can see. Um, so they again, they have some glitter and some things like that. This one also might be from the Christmas pack. The Christmas pack has red and green and white. And so you can see the, the glitter. And then this one is pearl. And here's another one with the pearl. So it's... Kind of difficult to see, but that's what I cut the little Frosty out of, not the big one. The big one is just plain white heavy stock, distressed heavy stock, and he's flat. All right, so then all of the little wreath, the package, the bows, the, um, you know, all the ribbons, and then any of the green, the peppermint, the holly up here, all of those were cut from this mini Christmas die set and all of them were colored with the different and I think um, I might have added a little frosted juniper maybe to this one or no 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 my bad it was the tree lot that's what I added for the wreath was the tree lot so I did add that one in as well so I colored all of those and then I put them on and you can see that I was very careful not to get really any snow on any of those except for the wreath. I do have a little bit of the snowfall grit paste on the wreath. Now when I was looking at this and then I, lo I looked and I saw that I had piled up a bunch of that distress. Um, this is the opaque grit paste. I don't know if you can see it's the opaque grit paste and I really piled it up there so that it was kind of a whole bunch of white snow, but you can see that the way that I put these on there, I put them on there so that they wouldn't bleed into the white snow. And then at the very bottom of 
Mr. Frost. I put some of that Snowfall Grit Paste. You can see how it's just icy and wonderful. It's, I think, my favorite holiday grit paste. And so this led me to want to check and see how the mica held up with the texture pastes. So I did a little bit. I didn't glue these down yet because they've been drying. And you probably, if you saw my Instagram post, you would have seen that uh, after I got started videotaping this, I decided that I needed to make a swatch and so I made these really quickly. So these tags I made back uh, several months ago and all I sprayed on them were the mica spray stains. And this one is the winterberry, the holly branch, the snow flurries, and down here is the peppermint. So I sprayed the mica stain on it and then I put the uh, embossing and uh, that was kind of it. I set them aside because I thought, oh, they'll make great little, you know, gift tags uh, at Christmas. But then I thought, oh, you know what I want to try today? I want to try out the different texture paste. So let's see how they held up with the mica stains. So let's take a look. I used three different types on each one. So this is the snow flurries. And if you'll look now, you, we have to be careful because around the very edge, I added a little bit of distress ink. So we're gonna look closer inside than on the very edge. All right, cause that wouldn't exactly be fair. But on the snow flurries at the top here, this is the snowfall grit paste, just plain snowfall grit paste. And I will tell you, I did two layers of each one. Okay, to give them a chance. So once one layer dried, I went through and I put a second layer just in case to see if I could get it to stay white. The snowfall on the inside, I think looks absolutely wonderful. The opaque on this one did pretty good, but the translucent, I'm not happy with at all. Um, I just kind of think it looks messy. So I'm not happy with the translucent grit paste for snow on the mica stain. The holly branch is a mess. So it bled through the two layers of opaque, the two layers of uh, the translucent, and you know, the snowfall kind of held its own. It bled through that first layer, but when you get the second layer on, you can see that it stayed pretty icy, which is kind of cool. So it's again, this is becoming my favorite, I'm telling you. On that winter berry, so the opaque two layers turned pink. This turned pink. This is the translucent. Uh, but if you look at that snowfall, it stayed pretty icy and you can see the glitter through there. So again, I'm pretty impressed with that. And last but not least, the hardest color of all to keep snow white is red. And so again, we have our two layers of opaque, which is pink. This just didn't even try. It just turned red and stayed red. And look at that. Are you kidding me? Snowfall comes through. It looks wintry. It looks icy, doesn't it? I am just so impressed with that. I, I mean, my hat is off to the ranger chemist because seriously, this snowfall is incredible. So I just thought I would point that out since I didn't do any mica stains on my snow blog um, or my snow technique video. I thought I'd point that out on this one, how it works on mica stains since I use mica stains on almost every part of this make. So there you go. That is basically how I went about making Mr. Frost in the forest tuning into his favorite show, Frosty the Snowman, and he is getting all ready for winter. He's got his peppermint uh, candy cane in his hand. He's got the presents, the wreath, and everything. He's, he's getting ready to, you know, decorate the house, um, and so he's tuning into his favorite show to, to do that. I don't know if you do that or not. I do. I love to get my favorite Christmas show on when I'm decorating. It really gets me in the mood to, you know, and inspired to get everything put um just you know just right and just festive so 
Again, very quick make. I'm so thankful that I had this background that I could just reach for and then get going right from there. And so again, I encourage you not to throw away uh, your things that you don't finish because they might become something completely new uh, next year or you might be able to get to it and get it finished, all right? And again, you never know when you might see this and maybe a Christmas version, maybe, coming up before the end of the year. All right, we'll give it a try. Thank you so much for tuning in to Mr. Frost's Winter Wonderland, and I will see you in the next blog post. Have a crafty day, my friends.